drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. This is part three of my food a guide for home brewers and looks at the methods around Solera sour beer. I want to make it very clear that you can follow this guide in full without a fooder and use a barrel or a different type of vessel for conditioning. However, it should be fully understood that the end results and absence of oak will be different and that you will lose various features of convenience. This guide will begin with a quick overview of Solera before explaining the style of beer that I am creating, along with BJCP notes and category. We will then take a quick look at water profiles. I will then go through the process in full with everything demonstrated from brewing my recipe until transfer into the secondary fermenter, which in my case is a fooder. I will then explain the use of brat yeast and the effects that can be enjoyable while conditioning with it. Due to the length of the ageing periods here, there will be no tasting or showing of the end beer within this video, but I will update on this in future episodes of this series. So let's get started. So you might be wondering what is Solera Sour Beer and why are breweries and home brewers alike so interested in it, so I will now explain. The concept of Solera beer is a very simple one based around blending. This is where a vessel is filled with sour beer or intended sour beer and after a period of time a portion of this is removed for consumption. This is then replaced with a fresh batch which could be either wort or beer. There are no defined rules here in terms of the volume for removal or for the period of time. For some for example this will be a yearly process and perhaps within 30 to 70 percent will be removed and then replaced. The Solera method is used to create a potential Potentially never ending supply of sour beer that takes much less time to condition and have flavours formed due to the blending that takes place. Naturally, because of how this works, larger vessels are more desirable than smaller ones unless you are not particularly thirsty. Hmm. Oak vessels are also preferred compared to anything else due to their living nature and the flavours they can promote. During a sour beer's process there is much choice of different types of yeast and bacteria and naturally oak will take all of this in. Just try stopping it. Before we get brewing, I believe it is vital to provide you with some further information that will prove useful to those of you that are interested in competition or that simply want to know more about the style of beer, which I believe should be everyone. The sour beer style that I'm sharing within this guide is what is known as a golden sour. Naturally this is light in colour and my version ensures that it has good head retention and body. I'm going to use a variety of different cultures and types of yeast to obtain the desired end result, which is essentially an easy drinking, refreshing and yet flavourful and complex example of the style, given time. However, for competition this type of sour beer falls under the category that the BJCP class as a mixed fermentation sour beer and this is under category 28B. We will now take a quick look at this BJCP category with a condensed format for key information. All of the defining areas under this category heading are variable according to base style, so as such there is a great deal of flexibility which is always a good thing. In terms of aroma, there will often be a wild or funky aroma with added aromatics from malt choices. Naturally, we have a variety of different colour possibilities here as well as differing levels of clarity that are acceptable. Head retention can be acceptably poor due to the high acidity levels. In terms of flavour, you have a wide range of possibilities here too, from high acidity and funk to more subtle, easy, palatable flavouring. These styles are commonly aged on oak, but this should not be the leading or dominant flavour. When it comes to mouthfeel, you can generally expect a light body with moderate carbonation with low ABV examples. You will note that the carbonation level will tend to increase along with the ABV. Overall, you can expect a low level of bitterness because this clashes with souring. These styles are all about yeast and bacteria choices, which will lead to the main profile of flavour. The BJCP do not offer any vital statistics for this category due to the variation. Before we brew, we should also consider our water profile. When it comes to a water profile for sour beer styles, there is really no agreement here in terms of general consensus. Many commercial sour beer styles made in Belgium, for example, are created using well water that has a hard profile. My own personal experience and taste has led me in the opposite direction towards soft water, which tends to be more agreeable for most people also. So my recommendation here is to try balance and soft profiles as outlined here on screen, with soft being the most agreeable starting point to my mind. Okay, let's get brewing. 
As always, I am sharing this recipe in full in this video's description with both metric and imperial measurements, as well as a link to the recipe on Brewfava, which is free to use with some limitations. I am using a Brewzilla 65 litre here, and I am creating a 40 litre batch, but naturally this recipe will suit other brewing systems and can easily be scaled to other volumes. To convert this recipe to your brewing system on Brewfather, simply change the equipment section and scale it to the volume desired. You should then replace my ingredients with your own and ensure the values for IBU and gravity match that for the original. This is very easily done by using the recipe in the video's description for reference. Onto the mash and you can see that I'm using a typical one step plus mash out here. Let's now move on to the recipe starting with the vitals. Here we have a 5% beer with an IBU of 12 which creates a BUG ratio of 0.24. If you would rather have something a little less potent in the ABV department then by all means change the gravity downwards and adjust the IBU downwards with it so that it keeps within the same BUG ratio. For this style I would suggest that you do not increase past an ABV of 5%. Unlike water profiles for sour beers, there is some very good general consensus on grain bills that work well. So I am sharing something very typical here, and I suggest that you run with this rather than making changes. You can certainly make your own artistic expression when it comes to yeast and bacteria choices, which are really the main things driving difference in such a beer style. More on this later. Looking at the grain bill, you can see here that we have mostly Pilsner malt, which is the main fermentable. This is supported by wheat malt, oats and spelt. Spelt, if you are not familiar, can be pretty commonly found at homebrew stores, and is a type of grain that it has its roots within wheat. Spelt is widely used by craft breweries these days within wheat beers and brings its own nice flavour that is best experienced rather than explained. If you cannot obtain it, then it is a shame, but you can simply replace it with more wheat milk. The purpose of the wheat, oats and spelt is to simply bring body along with a little flavouring and texture. Without such additions our sour beer would be simply lacking. Depending on how fine your grain crush is you may find the need for rice or oat holes within this mash. These holes will help the grain bed filtrate protecting against a stuck mash or sparge. After the mash I performed a quick sparge and set the brewing system to the boil, ready for the next step. Once it reached boiling point I then stirred in the top foam so that it dropped to the bottom of the brewing system. Naturally some like to remove it, the choice is yours. This is where things started to become different to a normal brew because I then added my immersion chiller, which is the Silla by Jaded Brewing in case you are wondering. I boiled for 5 minutes before chilling down to 39 degrees Celsius, which is just above 102 degrees Fahrenheit. The chiller is added in early so that it can become sanitary via boiling. The next step now is to actually reduce the pH to between 4.2 to 4.5. This is to protect your wort. Personally I use lactic acid and an accurate pH meter is essential. I then added in an appropriate amount of both wild brew sour and Helveticus. The amount that you will use will depend on your volume. These are both part of the Lollamon's wild brew series of products and are the first two cultures that I am going to be using for this sour beer. Other souring techniques will be used later on to add in even more flavour, but the first stage of this particular brew is to do what is known as a kettle sour. For more information about these cultures, kettle souring, other sour beer recipes and techniques, I have a four part sour beer series available on my channel as shown on screen now. The next step is to cover the wall with a layer of clean film which I recommend you sanitise by spraying it with water diluted sanitizer. This should be a nice fit on the edges too. Keep your brewing system plugged in and set it to an appropriate temperature. If you are using both cultures as I am here then an in between temperature of 39 Celsius or just over 102 degrees Fahrenheit was advised by Lallemand. The advantage of using both is that you will obtain a wider spectrum of flavour and complexity. I maintained this temperature for two days and used the system's lid and put a towel over the top. My wife was deeply thrilled that I did this in our bathroom. Ah, perhaps not then. I then heated the brewing system back up to boiling temperatures and I stirred the protein back in by skimming the head as before. Now shown on the right hand side of the screen is the relevant recipe information for the boil stage. This is a single edition of Sars Hops giving a mere 12 IBU. I used a boil time of 60 minutes for this one but I could have chopped this down to less and simply used more hops. The choice is yours here, it is not really a lot of hops, especially if you are brewing a small batch volume. 
You will also notice that I suggest a triple serving of yeast nutrients. This is only if you are going to use Vosqueg as per my recipe. If not, then a regular serving will be adequate. I then cooled down the wort to yeast pitching temperatures using an immersion chiller. During this time I used the pump for recirculation and also stirred the wort with the chiller to speed up the cooling. I then did something you have never seen me do on camera before. I pitched the yeast for fermentation straight into the wort within the brewing kettle. Do not be alarmed, this is certainly not the first time that I have done this and I am certainly not the only one to find this to be a great method to use when it is called for. Within this particular beer's process it simply makes things much easier for me because I can use the brewing system's pump for transfer into my fooder later on. Once again I added the top lid and added a towel on top. The brewing system was then set to the fermentation temperature. Here is a quick look at the fermentation in action. By doing an open fermentation like this I was also potentially encouraging wild yeast to join the party, which certainly would suit me for this one. As expected the Voskveg ate through this wort very quickly and two days later it was time for transfer. Before transfer I added the 65 litre Brusilla recirculation arm and hosing that I would use for transfer into this Brusilla 35 litre system. I then ran cleaning and sanitization cycles. I must stress how important it is to do this as you would with any other normal beer. This is a sour beer, not a contaminated beer. I then transferred directly into the fooder and once this was complete I added two different types of brat. Brat is a type of yeast and it is available in different forms, but those that are readily available to home brewers fall under three categories. Firstly you have Brat Bruxellensis which is known for its horsey character along with sweat. It certainly has its fans though, so try not to judge it before trying it. Brett Lambicus provides that intense funk and sour cherry that is very well known in Lambic beers. And then lastly Brett Class Ennii brings forward more fruit than funk and is known for its aroma which is very pineapple like. I am using Brett here for conditioning, it can however be used for 100% of your fermentation. I have chosen two different types that interest me but it's certainly fine to use just one or all three. When you use Brett for secondary conditioning it will eventually complete its task irrespective of pitch rate, but a higher pitch rate will speed things up of course. Some Brett users prefer a smaller and slower pitch rate so that they can enjoy the in-between flavours as well as the end full effect. Some will wait for mere weeks while some will wait for months. It is also known that after about 18 months conditioning that some will consider this to be the sweet spot time as the funk has become less aggressive and there is a good level of funk and fruit. As always only your own individual taste palette can be the true guide here but let's face it it is fun taking samples from time to time to make judgments. Naturally one of the great benefits of the Solera method is that by blending you can retain these longer term benefits after an initial period of time leading into the future. When used for secondary conditioning Brett will eat through more sugars in your wort providing a greater level of attenuation compared to regular yeast. In fact within secondary 90% plus attenuation is commonplace with some strains being more hungry than others. Many will use a constant temperature between 18 to 22 during fermentation, which is easy to maintain well within most lived in areas. Though Brett Clos Ennii can actually be known to have some very big esters if pushed at 29 Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Warmer temperatures certainly create more esters, but at a sacrifice of a less funky profile, so let your taste requirements guide you here. I am now in the position of waiting for my first Solera blend to condition with Brett. I will provide an update on this project's progress within the next video of this series. My thanks go out to Fuda Smith for creating such a well made and thought out product for home brewers of this type. If you are interested in the Fuda used in this series then check out their website as shown below on screen. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!